Welcome to Deadflix. I'm Pepper. And I'm Mike. And we are talking about... We're going to be talking about the horror thriller debate, which is raging all on the internet at the present moments and Not last on. years. Not on the internet. Not on the internet. Sips tea for dramatic, dramatic pause. In the interest of <laughs> bringing a little bit of a kind of like a different format to this specific discussion, mm. uh, <laughs> Pip and I are going to basically take up oppos- opposing ends. Yeah. And then we're going to flip over about midway and see if we can do this debate style in both directions. Whose end am I? Uh, you are my end. I'm your end. Okay. Yes, you are my end. <laughs> <laughs> All oh, right. Am 15 I- seconds in and the sex jokes are flying. I wasn't Good a sex times. joke. Good it was time. an ass joke. Yeah, like a, like, a, like a butt sex joke. No. This butt sex is too cool. I hate that fucking song. I don't know why. Stop it. <laughs> okay. So, back to the topic. Yes. Um, so, which, which side would you like to, to start with? I will start with the complaining side. No, I mean like the pro, the pro horror or the pro thriller? Uh, pro horror. Pro horror. Mm. Okay, so in that case, Pip, my dear, here is your dictionary, your tool Look, of the trade. Words. Actual, actual, actual words. Wor- now, word book dictionary. Oh, you take my tea away. Yeah. Okay, so before we started this, we we actually looked at an Oxford dictionary and a Collins dictionary, and we're, uh, we're really annoyed at the Collins dictionary, whose it, descriptions were minimal. Like it really was. Yeah, to to kind of said horror, horror, disgust, disgust, or hatred. Which is totally... Which is a bit... I've never thought of horror as hatred. No. If I'm horrified by something, that doesn't mean I hate it. Mm. If I'm scared of something, but it was... it was, Yeah, it seemed like a really unusual description. So, the according, to, boys. according to the, the, the Little Oxford Dictionary, this is which a, is probably backwards on the camera. Yeah, it's pretty um, It shouldn't be backwards. This thing should... Should reverse it, should it? Mm. Horror. Now, an intense loathing or fear. Often, deep dislike, colloquial intense dismay. Hor- horrifying thing, adjective, of films, etc., designed to arouse feelings of horror. Okay. I don't mind arousing feelings of horror. <laughs> <laughs> and I bet you don't either I if you're listening that. to this. I get that every time I open the credit card book. <laughs> yeah, but it just says coffee, 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 notebook, <laughs> coffee, coffee, notebook. <laughs> coffee, 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 notebook. Yeah, last weekend. God, so, I, got, I got let let loose around little unattended and came back. Ah, with, yes, I was at like work. Like a trolley full of coffee. <laughs> yeah, he really did actually. Yeah. And and guess who's the one that drinks the coffee? Me. Yeah, I don't drink coffee. Well, you, I like coffee. I don't really drink you, it in the house. You don't. Yeah, you I don't like, drink. You like coffee out. I like coffee out. That horrifies me. That I would rather drink coffee out than in the house. Yeah, yeah. Take your take your tea, and I will do the thriller side. Okay. Okay. So it's a thriller. <laughs> okay, so thrill is a noun, obviously. Mm. Um, wave or nervous tremor of emotion or sensation. Throb, pulsation, verb, cause to. Cause to feel thrill, quiver or throb as with emotion. Mm-hmm. Nothing says, nothing says no, emotion no, like thr- throbbing. Throb, throbbing. Um, and, and actually, when I was reading the Collins Dictionary, there mm. was like only two words between thrill and throb. Yeah, I think that might have been a school dictionary. I, as, as in, I'm but children, serial... all children need to know throb. Because that's, that's the kind of word you're looking for when you're, when you're 16 years old. And you're like, well, uh, sex didn't really tell me very much. What does throb tell me? Throb. <laughs> I was not that kid. I was not that savvy at all. No, me neither. The pre, the pre, yeah, no, me sh- neither. Sure you, sure you weren't. <laughs> right, okay. Uh, thriller. Mm. Uh, noun. Sensational or You've exciting. Just read that all. No, I oh. read thrill. Sorry, sorry. So I started with thrill, and now we're going on to thriller, no, which right. is the, the the subject. Song of by Michael thing. Jackson. Yeah. Actually, it says that here. It probably check, will. Check it. No, it doesn't. Oh. Had you <laughs> suck. Oh, <God>. Um. <laughs> thriller. Okay. Yep. Noun. Without interruption, sensational or exciting play, story, etc., etc., etc. Not etc. No, not not espresso. Oh, God. fucking mugginses. Right. So we've come to the conclusion that well, thriller is supposed to excite or thrill, and horror is supposed to specifically to do with loathing, hatred, and utter dislike of something. I think let's get rid of the hatred. Should we take hatred out of the I think discussion? hatred should just... F- hatred, hatred, hatred should, should just fuck, fuck off. off. Yeah. Yeah, get into bed with Donald Trump. Yep. Okay. So, 
Who is gonna? So you stop the scene. Okay. So, so pro horror. What? Why? Why should like horror stay horror? Horror should stay horror. Why? I think horror should stay horror because I feel like by categorizing something as a thriller, mm -hmm. they are almost making it more palatable for a wider audience. Instead mm. of saying, "Okay, this is going to shock you. This is going to scare you." It's almost like they're going, okay, what can mm. we do to market this to a wider audience? And I understand that, yes, mm. it's all about money. Everything's about money at the end of the day. Um, but it's for me, it's really disappointing because it's like, I want people to have the confidence to say, this is a fucking horror movie mm. and this is going to scare the shit out of you and not have it be taken... It's like Blade. Blade is listed as a thriller. There's a 50-50 split on a lot of that, though. <sighs> It's vampires running around drinking blood. Okay, so contemporary thriller movies. Uh, that, but then movies have that have to... been categorized as thrillers in the last however long it's been. So we've got Hereditary. Hereditary, yeah. Get Out. Um, A Quiet Place. Quiet Place. Yeah, that's... Ghost Stories. Ghost Stories. Was that listed as a thriller? Yeah. Well, fuck's sake. And that's... Okay. that's... But the problem is, um, is, is I also have to take into account. So other than just saying I feel like it's being marketed differently... I think differently, Suspiria was listed as a thriller as well. Probably. I'm going to pull these up while you're talking. Okay, that's fine. But I think for me, it's also considering how trends have changed. I mean, nowadays we're more desensitized. People don't, you know, people aren't scared by the one single reanimated monster walking out of a mm. closet. Whereas, you know, go back a hundred years and people watching Frankenstein are fainting. Makes sense. And it's just, um, I can understand how people may find these things as thrillers now, but mm. to me, it it just feels like a cop out. And as somebody who specifically spe ugh, get my word up, yeah. specifically goes out there seeking horror, it changes how you can even find things. Um, for example, if you're if you're watching, and they'll find they'll be part listed under horror as well. Yeah, yeah. But, but top. Yeah, top. They, they do a crossover. They do a crossover. Yeah. So top, top pre-orders pre in thriller, thriller movies. movies. This is according to Google Google Play. So they've got Us, which is listed as a horror, but it's a thriller. Yeah. It's there's this weird kind of crossover mm. um, where they'll put stuff out as thriller. Yeah. But then they'll kind of bring it back as horror, and it just it's almost like if they list it as a thriller when it goes into the cinema, more people are likely to see it. And, and I it's think that's basically my turn to bring in... To uh, bring I was in just going to say, the last thing I was going to say is it's... Um, I forgot what I was going to say. Sorry. Oh, no. Oh, go. You well, would. So, so the thing is, I get why it is becoming thriller. Mm -hmm. And I th think as much as it irks me as a horror person, I think the bigger picture is more important than the small kind of potatoes that everyone's kind of picking off about. Mm. Oh, I remember my point now. Let's hear it. Okay, so, for example, the algorithms in things nowadays. So if you want to watch something on Netflix, Shudder, mm -hmm. whatever, and you can't really do A to Z searches anymore. They've, they've eliminated that. Yeah, you, you have to go by genre. If you want to find some of the films you like, you look in horror, it doesn't appear there. You have to look in thriller mm. to find half the movies that you want to watch. Mm. And I find that really I that's I, that's become a problem for me. I feel like that in its as a whole, this whole kind of suggesting mm. to you what you need to watch yeah. is so problematic. And I disagree with it. Just point it, it it annoys me that I don't even have the option mm. to be my own person anymore. It's that I've I get told what a person like me should be watching yeah. based on all the stuff I've done historically, instead of me being able to discover the kind of things mm. that I would naturally organically discover yeah. on my own, which was 90% of the joy of being into the stuff that I'm into. I get that. I mean, so it's like, I don't even have the option. Like, mm. so Shudder for, for the record, um, which is a horror streaming service. And for the record, if you are at all into the kind of thing that we're into, yeah, and if, we're, is. If, if we're talking about this, this is not a sponsored thing. No. Um, the UK offering is shit for the record, which is a right shame. But Get yourself a VPN. Yeah, for we're not condoning. Con, con, no, condoning. VPNs are fine. But get yourself a VPN. Um, other thing I was going to say, so when it comes to mm -hmm. thrillers, if somebody said to me something was a thriller movie, 
my instant thought is that I'm expecting to see true life drama, horror, yeah. and drama. I'm expecting to see police. I'm expecting to see serial killers. Exactly. I'm expecting to see that kind of stuff. And yet, when you think about it, you try and tell somebody who says they're not into mm. horror about serial killers, oh, no, yeah, no, no, oh, I'm not into horror. I'm not into horror. And it's like, but that but stuff is what is listed as thriller. But they're totally... Uh, the, but the, the, but the, the same people who kind of are anti horror at the same time, and I'm trying to stay on my side of the fence here. Mm. Um, the same people who are totally against horror are the same people who are going, "Yeah, Game of Thrones, I love that fucking rape scene. That's amazing when this guy gets disemboweled when he crushes his head like a fucking watermelon. I cheered; it was awesome, you know." And yeah. and like that, or they're it's the same the people who are, who are pro kind of Walking Dead. Yeah. So it's kind of like people are, there's this cognitive dissonance yeah, that doesn't really is. make any sense to me. It's like, dude, be at peace with who you are, which. And I can only assume that's why they're turning Thriller into this exactly. umbrella in order to. They're trying to slip things under the radar, which I get. But at the same time, kind of by categorizing yeah. it as a thriller, you lose. Okay. So to just kind of go historically mm. here, um, a lot of the horror stuff that I found over the years automatically was categorized under sci-fi. Yes. Oh yeah, no, definitely. So you the, go back to the 1970s, early 1980s, you would find it under sci-fi and there is such a huge, I'm taking over again. Mm. I'm sorry. No, Good but it's, it's, there was um, an article the other day on the internet and I, c I could not tell you which author it was. I couldn't, mm -hmm. I know it's an old article, but I think somebody had said something like, I'd rather you kill me mm -hmm. than stick me in the sci-fi category of publishing. Really? Which is like, it's like, I love sci-fi. I can't remember reading sci-fi for the longest time, but at the same time, I think I don't. <sighs> but it's, it's, it's like talking, my dad is a big sci-fi fan, mm. but the kind of books that my dad introduced me to from sci-fi were things like Cabal by Clive Barker. And yeah. I'm like, that was purchased as a sci-fi book. Yeah, but that was the marketing dodge that they did. They did to back get it. in the 70s and 80s so, was you put it under sci-fi, people are, are more likely to watch it than horror because horror then mm. was things like um, Q, the flying serpent, and thriller. And it was a slash, so thriller is you know? the new sci-fi. Thriller is the new sci-fi. It's the new umbrella by which things are being. Because yeah. they're slipping things in under the radar to the public and. People don't know that they like the thing that this is, so you got to find a way to communicate to them that it's more it's acceptable. Making it more it's making palatable. it more palatable. It's calling it almond milk instead of calling it nut juice. Yeah, that's the, that's the entire thing. Thriller. It's fucking nut juice. Thriller uh, horror is nut juice. Horror is, nut, is almond thriller milk. is almond milk. Yeah. Okay, so I, I think that's I think that's fair actually. So, thriller all in. As a as a blanket title, I mm. think I think we're probably just repeating ourselves at this point. Mm. Um, things that would have shown up as sci-fi back in the nineties would have been things like Event Horizon. Yeah, Event Horizon which is was definitely insanely horrific. It's insanely horrific. It's very much a horror movie, but any elements and this thing is science fiction. Mm. It's horror and science fiction is now so deeply interwoven that I feel like you would really have to pick it apart. And then that's when mm. you find you the science fiction disappears in the thriller category stuff. Yeah. Like the serial killer movies, the true to life mm. horrors, the, the, the real, like things like the film, the room, not the com not, not the terrible film, the room, but, the room? um, one with Brie Larson where she's trapped in a room with a boy and it won. Like, you told Oscar. me about this. I haven't yeah. Seen it. I've not seen it either. I just know what it's about. Okay. Um, but that again is based on real life event type things like the Joseph Fritzl story and Yeesh. people that built the sex dungeon basement things and kept girls and stuff. And there's lots of this thing. And that's the crime and real life horror stuff. And that you don't see related to science fiction. Yeah. It almost feels like horror is this central and there's these little webs coming off it that link it into mm. different categories. And I get that there is that. It's horror is like metal music. If you can't there's categorize so it, many you can't sell it. No. Um, but then people get so tied into what the category is yeah. that they're unwilling to like look outside of themselves and see the bigger picture here. But I suppose the other thing I'm thinking is mm -hmm. with times changing, so science fiction would have been far bigger in the 60s and 70s 
and the 80s just due to the fact that technological advancements mm. that were being made were not commonplace. You had the moon landing. Mm. You had computer games being created. You had people playing Pong, you know, people going to arcades and playing games that weren't there before. Because I'm super into neon and 80s and all that kind of shit. I yeah, love exactly. that kind of stuff. Um, you know, that stuff being created. So science fiction, aliens, um, technology going crazy, robots, all that kind mm. of stuff was much more at the forefront of our minds, whereas now it's, and like we've talked about in, in other things, you know, the kind of the kind of creatures and things that we're seeing now, in mo it's monster movies are the things yeah. that's back. You know, monster movies are what gets people. It's no longer AI and... Because and, and, mm. even, you know, even looking at, at AI fear movies, that's back to early 2000s, maybe end of the 90s, where you had... As mobs. We had like I am Legend and the world falling about and crumbling. And I am Legend isn't the isn't an AI movie. No, it's not an AI movie. But I'm talking about how technology goes to a certain point, and then and then of... everything crumbles and we have nothing left. Mm -hmm. And you get these whole kind of like worlds where Makes we sense. had everything. We had these all, all these technological advancements. The world falls apart, and then you get uh, I Robot. And again, mm -hmm. it's then it's the fear of that kind of stuff. I'm just going to list Will, Will Smith movies. Um, yeah, pretty much. That's where this is going. It's aliens and robots and things were. Mm -hmm. The sci-fi introduction at, at, at this sort of intense point, so it's well, it's less of the fear of the unknown now. It's more back to folklore and fairy tales mm. because that is the only unknown we have left. You think? I <sighs> I think we got a lot more unknown. I think we just there's this overall illusion at present. Like everybody believes that doctors know everything. Everybody mm. believes that. Um, but is that ignorance is bliss? No, 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 no. I think it's this kind of this this overriding kind of faith in the world above you. Mm. And with the advent of the kind of current 2019 to date this video. Yeah. Uh, political discussion. Yeah, apocalyptic political discussion. Yeah, but I mean, it's always been an apocalypse, you know, kind of back in the day when it was a different president, it was a different kind of thing. People things. were less knowledgeable of the situations. It was less, <sighs> people were treated more like they were dumb. On honestly, I, I think people had more faith in stuff, but this entire situation as it's become, as it's come around has conveyed to the universe and the world at large that maybe the, the, the stuff that's in place is not necessarily what we thought it was and that we don't have faith. And this is going to turn into a political thing. Oh, no, I'm it's, going in a different not, route. Don't worry. It's basically that we are... The stuff you think you've got faith in it doesn't exist in the way that you believed it did. So it's like uh, the way I can explain my thing of kind of present culture and present safety. It's like a window in a house. Mm -hmm. Okay, so where I'm from uh, in South Africa, all of the... You know, houses have burglar guards. That's it. It's not a discussion point. It's a safety issue. And it doesn't matter what skin color you are or mm. any of that kind of stuff. It is a safety issue. So if you put burglar guards up, you put them up. Mm. Because glass means fuck all. So here in the UK, you have a glass window and everybody on ground floors and things mm. believe that because I've got a glass window, no one will ever break in and steal my shit. And you kind of sit there and think, no, you've got a piece of glass protecting you from the outside world. And it's this illusion that this is protection. Mm -hmm. And the reality is the only thing that keeps that glass intact is the illusion of a generalized agreement across the population. That if you are sealed culture, in, you are sealed in. That yeah. If you're sealed in, no one will breach the seal and break into your, into your space. Mm. And then you've got kind of you know, policing laws and all that other stuff, but it's a generalized agreement that people who breach that contract will feel, you know, will feel the the, the repercussions. Yeah. There will be consequences. And I think that that's the illusion that we live under. Mm. And we've basically always believed that the people at the top have got our best interests at heart. And more than that, they're competent. Well, because we don't see the inner machinations. Of I'm going, going the other route of that. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying, Nowadays, we are more informed. We are more aware mm -hmm. because it's things like we, okay, we watched the movie The Stuff the other day. Yeah. And that whole film was based on a lie that was based on media mm -hmm. and a company and conglomerates saying, This thing is good for you. Mm -hmm. You will like this. And it's the fact that nowadays we are more likely to look at a packet of food 
and read it and read the label. to understand what's, what, what we're putting into our bodies. Because there are laws about labels and there's laws about putting stuff in But it's not just that there are laws because people nowadays, if there wasn't something on a label, mm. people would go and ask, well, what is in this then? Yeah. Whereas you go back to the 80s and 70s, if like you're saying with the government, mm. somebody tells you this is what it is, you take it at face value. And that is the way that things were. And yeah. I mean, we've like totally diverged away from horror and thriller and everything like that. Yeah, we have. But it's it's fine. It's I, I think it's basically the contents. You're because people are more aware of the world and more savvy with things. Mm. Uh, people are less likely to be scared uh, by horror. Uh, are less likely to take things at face value, like you said. Mm. So people ask more questions, yeah. Or at least intelligent questioning people ask more questions. Yeah. Like you don't, unless you're an idiot, you don't share shit on Facebook without verifying it. Yeah. And, you know, that's basically this generation and this kind of time frame and this new kind of ecosystem that we live in. Those are the new problems that we have to learn. And those are the new kind of table manners of the mm. current situation it's that you have to verify information and make sure that you can state for yourself and for the people that you're sharing it to. Otherwise, you're being irresponsible. Okay. And if you're sharing stuff that doesn't. So to get to get back to the actual subject here, like. People are, by the nature of the internet, if you can't find something, you can't sell it. And if you can't get the kind of thing to the people who would like it, mm. did you really make anything? <laughs> so, if, if a film's released in the woods and no one's around to hear it play on the DVD player that's there plugged into yeah, something, did you really make, did a, you film? Really make a film? It's that, it's that whole thing. So kind of because there's so much content out there, so... You could take a film like, I don't know, the Quiet, A Quiet Place, mm. which we both saw in cinema. Both saw in cinema, both really, really enjoyed. It was. It was really fun. It was very well written. Um, the cast was great. And, you know, it's like having having the, mm. the writer and director star in his own fucking movie. Yeah, and his wife and, and stuff. And it there, was, were yeah. plot, there were plot holes and there were yeah. all kinds of other stuff. But I think our distinct enjoyment came from the fact that we were in a massive cinema. Yeah. There weren't too many people in it. Mm. And it was the enforced silence. Yeah. That you don't get in a home environment. And I think that that's why people aren't quite as into it, mm. having watched it on video and in home environments. But the point of that is, is that that film wasn't necessarily put out there as a horror movie. It was marketed as a thriller. Mm. You know, there are monsters. It's quiet. There's this whole kind of suspense thriller element to it. And it got out there and got a wider audience because of that tag. Mm. I get that. My, my brain is just bouncing back to the dictionary mm. and just thinking it's about supposed to thrill. what it's supposed to thrill. It's supposed to excite you. So I and understand. That's horror in and See, of and itself. that is horror in and of itself. But also, it's, I suppose, it's almost like mm. it's like SEO tagging stuff for Google. Yeah. You put in the code words that make people react. If you put in thrill mm. and you're promising them a good time, and you don't deliver. And no, 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 no. You're promising them a good time they're going to want to watch it rather than saying, if you watch this, it's going to fill you with hatred and loathing. And I think that's the problem is the mm. definitions of horror and thriller are so outdated. I think that they need to be redefined by modern culture. Mm. And I think, I think it's just not, things don't work the way they used to. And I think some stuff so, is so outdated that it's, it's, it's like a generational gap thing as well. Cause it's mm. like, like I said, Tattoos. I talk to my parents, tattoos. Yeah. But it's the same. It's like if I talk to my parents yeah. about horror, they're like, "Oh God, no, 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 I'm not into horror." And then, like, I'll turn around and they're watching um, some serial killer documentary, crime TV show, and I'm like, "Yeah, which includes which includes you know bodies, bodies and, and murder and blood and guts and gore and all this other stuff." Be and I'm like, up the walls and on the ceiling." And it's just like, and your mom's like, "No, not into horror." No, and it's like, do you not see how? Yeah, these two things kind of... But it's like if she comes across a movie herself, like if she watched the film The Ninth Gate, for example, mm. she could watch that herself and be like, oh, yeah, that was really nice. If I told her it was horror afterwards, she'd be like, oh. Mm. Uh, oh, no. And then it's it's it's, it's, it's becomes that, that argument of, retro, I'll try and prove to you how this is not horror. It's retroactive justification mm. to try and not be in a tribe. Yeah. But then you've got that thing with the tattoos all over again, where mm. kind of back in the day, if you had tattoos up your neck, and down your knuckles and down your arms, you know. You were bad news. You would basically, you'd walk into the pub and you'd fuck everybody's mom and then you'd beat their sisters to death with a lead pipe. And Only if they paid you, me. You know, <laughs> and this was the stereotype. Like mm. I've, I, 
I'm a bald guy. I have no hair. I've shaved my hair off on purpose because being 30 and having a bald spot is... You look fucking ridiculous, so shave your fucking hair. It is. It is a cultural... That's a PSA. Trust me. Do it. You'll feel better. But it is, um, it is a cultural reaction to that because you have no hair yeah. and because you're young, so people yeah. are automatically assuming it is a shaved head I'm a, decision, I'm a, I'm a, a skinhead. I'm a, I'm a tough head. You're, you're a skinhead rather sh- than you are a bald guy. Yeah. So therefore so, you are dangerous and or are going to follow them down the road. Yeah, the, or natural, the natural stigma yeah. is basically that they see, you, they, they see me with no hair mm-hmm. and they treat me the way that every other thing, every, every other... It's association, isn't it? Yeah, it's association. So all the other situations that have led them up to this point in their life has basically led them to the, the link that bald equals dangerous. Mm. And that is the whole thing. So tattoos have equaled dangerous. Mm. But now it's this kind of weird thing where the guys have got fucking tattoos up their neck and they'll make you a vegan sandwich and write you a poem, you know, and recycle oh, re- and, and recycle your glass, yeah. your, your glass bottles. And it's just... Like that's strange to me, all mm. in and of that's in and of itself, and with that kind of leaning into gender roles mm. and how that all yeah. plays out, yeah, it. I don't think horror will ever be rebranded unless something drastic happens. So, like, if they were to say Game of Thrones, I think they're not rebranding horror; they're rebranding the content of horror. Mm. That's the problem: is horror is horror needs rebranding. It does, and mm. and I know I get that it's not going to. But in the uh, minds of people, it has changed. I was thinking more along the lines of that if you took something like a like Game of Thrones and as a genre, yeah, and you basically said George Martin and everybody else say, you know what, fuck you, all. this is uh, horror fantasy, mm. and that's it. And they do these blanket sweeps with these massive things that people like, mm. and then you kind of have this mental shift in the same way that um, you'd have insane kind of racists yeah would be um i was watching this amazing thing a couple of years ago about a guy who had been brought up racist his whole life yeah um it ended up in the kkk and white supremacist regimes and all that other stuff and through a series of kind of you know he'd had a tough life Mm. and then his family they had become his family so Mm. this was his belief structure as a result of being a young disillusioned teen and he'd grown up in it and then through a series of things had basically been forced into situations with people of different different colors yeah and then had generated these beautiful relationships and had Mm. to redefine his entire existence based on this the relationships he built yeah yes and then he spent the rest of his life creating situations and outreaching to other kind of kkk members and white supremacist guys to try and basically humanize people yeah and we need the same it's the same kind of process for this is people need to associate horror with what it is and that it's not a dirty word anymore and i think in the but advent it, but they need to be careful to not yes. sanitize it and that again with racism is yeah. the same thing is the problem that's happening at the moment is people aren't going you need to understand what racism is people in the media are sanitizing it and going oh it's not so bad it's yeah. just you know it's racism like, is ter- as bad it's as fucking it's terrible. Ever, it's, it's disgusting it's as bad as it's ever been, and it's worse because it's it's more out in the open. It's more out in the open, and people are sanitizing it, I and can't that is the issue. That. And that is what needs to not happen with horror. Horror does not. And I'm not comparing horror to racism, but I'm talking about an mm. extreme being sanitized so for people to cope with it. Yeah, is not right. It's not right at all. Mm. Like it, it, it shouldn't be sanitized. People need to look at it for what it is and go. This is what this is. Mm. This is horror, and and. And, you know, there's no kind of on the fence with it. Mm. So is, is horror kind of a young person's game then? I, 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 I'm not talking about us specifically. I mean, across the board has... It's, it was originally basically sold to the younger people mm. as a thrill ride. And it was a way to see boobs. And, uh, you know, kind of Joe Bob's tagline back in the, back in the day and kind of up to now mm. uh, for his... Driving, driving movie the, like things, the mutant, and it the, was the mutant credo. Yes, the mutant oath. I can't remember the name of it, and it's basic. It's blood, boobs, and beasts. Yes, and it's the god of blood, boobs, and beasts, and that was what was drawing people mm. in. So, I forget where the fuck I was going with that, but there was a really good point, and I swear to God, it's there somewhere, up in the ether, about youth and yes. horror. So, in that same way that basically, kind of. 
people are young and heavy metal becomes this screaming, terrifying thing that they play the most despicable music they can find mm. and it pisses off everybody around them and they play it at the loudest volume they can play. And some folks might enjoy it. Some folks might not. Other people might just be doing it for the effect of that it's getting to, mm. uh, you know, that it's giving to uh, the reaction that, that they're getting from the people around them who yeah. are forced into positions of listening to them. But then do you kind of, do these people advance in years and become more refined and basically lean away from these more kind of angry screamo things and find a more kind of like refined taste? So it's or, horror. And is horror that kind of a horror thing? Horror is a journey of self-discovery, isn't it? Really? Yeah. It's, so, uh, I suppose, you know, you're a teenager, you look for the, the most disgusting mm. horror movie you can find to go, ah, oh, I'm going to watch this and prove how tough and strong I am. And then as a mm. grown up, you're kind of like, well, I can see the merit in this movie. Mm. Like it's, it's like so we watched Street Trash last night. It's fun. It was fucking brilliant. Like it was, it was really fun, and I can see why people don't like it. But it was just bonkers. It was batshit crazy. Like the, but it was really, but it, it was, was just a fun. fun fucking movie. That's the thing is, it's like you look for entertainment, and yeah. I think that is the biggest thing. Which I'm going to round this off now. Yeah, is the biggest thing is that horror and thriller is becoming the same blanket genre. Yeah. Because people want entertainment, and I think movie creators and book writers and anything to do mm. with the genres are literally going. Let's let's meld this because you know what? All we want to do is we want to provide entertainment. Yeah. We're not looking to provide horror, thriller anymore. It's mm. becoming same thing. Thorough. I was waiting for you to say that. <laughs> so, I can hear the machinations. So the you know, clicking into place. Belt up, slip down your drink, pull on your big boy panties, and get ready for some thora. Some thora. <laughs> and I think that's where we're going to leave it. I think that's a that that that's a wonderful. And with some thora. From thora. <laughs> I like some thora. <laughs> so we will be, be right, right back. back. Cheers, guys. Just a small portion of the torture that awaits you.